moving the crowd in the United Nations General Assembly and saying that we should have a new UN, the Kenyan president, Dr. William Ruto, was called on an interview by BBC and interviewed by one Alan Kasunga. During the interview, he was asked a few questions, one of which how he was going to reduce the price of fuel in Kenya, which had gone a record high of 179 Kenya shillings from the subsidized one, which was 160 Kenya shillings. After the interview, a lot of people came up with the news that the president of Kenya is considering buying fuel from Russia. Is this true or is this their own interpretation of things? Is this the media interpretation of things? Is this what he said in the interview? Watch this video, listen to a snippet of that interview and leave a comment and let us know what you think about the Western media because you will be surprised. What one says during a campaign looking for votes is not always what they do once in the seat. For example, while running, Mr. Ruto said he would lower fuel prices if he won and that he didn't think subsidies were sustainable. And true to his word, at least on the sustainability of government aid, he quickly removed parts of the fuel subsidies, making the fuel prices skyrocket from 160 shillings or about $1.30 a litre to 179 shillings or close to $1.50. I wanted to know how he balances the promise in the campaigns and decisions made now. The strategy we have is to ensure that we work out with the market forces on how we can have a government-to-government -government relationship that will get us fuel at probably 20-25% cheaper than in the market. Those are the interventions I'm looking at. But I had to remove the subsidies because they were a huge drain on resources that would be used for the development of the country. And yet, the prices were not coming down, number one. And number two, it was generally distorting prices of fuel in the country and creating unnecessary shortages. We now have gotten rid of shortages. We haven't gotten rid of the, of the high prices, but we've done two things. We have saved money that was going down the drain with cartels in the subsidy program. Number two, we have eliminated shortages. And number three, I am no, now going to move on to the agenda of making sure that we have government-to-government -government relationships that will progressively now begin the journey to bring the prices of fuel down. Is Russia an option? Would you buy fuel from them? All options are, are available to us as a country. All options. Would it work better for you if you negotiated as an East African bloc for these deals, or does it work better if Kenya goes it alone in trying to find solutions to situations like the fuel crisis? East Africa would be a good option, but for now, Kenya is what we are going to be focusing on. That's interesting. You, you ran on the platform of Kenya Kwanzaa, Kenya first, and, and a lot of people's interpretation of that is you're going to be inward looking. Is that a fair assessment of what your strategy is? That's the wrong assessment of what the strategy is. Kenya Kwanzaa is about doing what is right for the people of Kenya. And that does not mean what is right for the people of Kenya is wrong for East Africans. It actually builds on what is good for Kenya must be good for East Africans. And in fact, that is the trajectory we are looking at. We are having a shared budget framework. We are having a shared monetary framework. We are looking at a growing East Africa. DRC is joining us in, in the East African community. We are building into the Africa continental free trade area. We are in the UN. We are a global family. It is no longer possible to do business in isolation of the rest of the globe. And that is why 
I can tell you for a fact that it is the, the wrong perception that we are going to be doing things to the exclusion of others. There is also the argument that Kenya has in the past come up with bilateral arrangements that have left out East Africans. Um, and I wonder if this is again something that you're looking to address. Uh, how, how do you see that moving forward? What's your plan in as far as that is concerned, ensuring that everybody's on board? I think it's the most natural thing to do, to demonstrate our commitment to regional issues. Kenya was the first country to sign onto the Africa continental free trade area and ratify. So our commitment to regional blocks and regional action cannot be qualified. And um, uh, going into the future, I think that is the spirit. We are concerned with what is going on in DRC. We are concerned with what is going on in Ethiopia. These are our neighbors. This is our neighborhood. And that is why we are concerned about uh, what's going on in our region. And that is going to be the approach of Kenya. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe.